Our story begins on the continent of anti-Islam, where the demon lord is waging war for the rights of the demons. The demon race has long been persecuted for their existence, and now they revolt against it. The war on humans is led by the demon lord and his four generals, a dragon named Elect, Lucifer, Alcio, and Malakota. The war on the humans rages on, but the humans aren't just going to take it lying down. They rise up with their heroes and sacred swords to fight against the demons and destroy the insurgent armies around them. They then proceed to the central island to lay siege to the demon lord's palace of the four generals. Alcil is the only one left undefeated, and he intends to keep it that way, even if he is currently being jumped by the heroes. Meanwhile, the demon lord is battling a bunch of powerful heroes within the palace, and their tag team attacks prove to be too much for him to handle alone. He is frozen in place by his spell and slashed by the hero Alcio, who teleports into the room and rescues the demon lord. As they regroup and strategize, they realize they can't beat the hero army, so the only possible course of action is to retreat for the moment. He conceives into Isla and opens a portal to another world before jumping through it with Alcio. But he swears to return to take over anti-Isla. They wake up in a noisy city alley and wonder where they ended up. But then they notice that they have lost their demon forms altogether. The sight of two strangely dressed men yelling in a foreign language attracts the attention of the police, but the police just think they're lost foreign cosplayers. Alcil doesn't like how the human police officer addresses him, and he prepares to unleash an explosive blast upon them. But nothing happens, and he just looks like an edgy teen. The demon lord is put in an interrogation room with a police officer to gather information about him, but he turns the tables on the police officer and hypnotizes him to gather information about Japan. He later finds Alcil in another interrogation room and hypnotizes the other police officer as well. They discuss what they know. For now, they are currently in Tokyo on a planet called Earth, and Earth has no real magic presence, which explains why they lost their demon forms. However, since the concept of magic still exists, then surely there will be a way to replenish their magic. But until then, it must follow the rules of this world. They must do the hardest thing imaginable, live as adults. First, they impersonate government workers in order to acquire identification cards, and then they go to the bank to open a bank account. Next, they must find a house for rent, so they go to a real estate agency. They arrive at the only house that will rent to strange foreigners with uncertain backgrounds, and they are a little underwhelmed by the one-room flat. But this is all that they can afford. The demon lord tells Alcil to bear their decline for the meantime until they can recover their power. But suddenly, the demon lord falls unconscious and must be taken to the hospital. It turns out he still needs to eat food to survive in the human body. But a grave reality has been imprinted upon the demon lord, he must get a job. They fill out job applications, and their names are now Malo Sidio and Ashi Ashro. Some time has passed, and Malo and Ashia have grown accustomed to earth and the economy. However, they are running low on money, and all they have left in the fridge are two shriveled up cucumbers and some jelly. Malo states that they can just live off the leftovers that he gets from work, but Ashia is against eating so much fast food and goes on a long rant about the health dangers involved. Malo doesn't want to listen to this and decides to head to work on his bike to avoid Ashia's lecture. On the way to work, it starts raining, and he notices a girl who got caught in the rain. So he gives her his umbrella since he works nearby. Malo gets to work and does his job really well. He's a fast food worker, but he's able to pay attention to the customer's needs and provide excellent service. Later in the break room, Malo tries to comfort his co-worker Chio, who messed up and dumped fries everywhere again, and she feels terrible about it. But soon, the break is over, and the lunch rush begins. But then, the fryer breaks down, and Malo worries if he will be blamed for it. He attempts to use magic to fix it but later decides against it, considering that he doesn't have much magic left. And despite that, he ends up getting a promotion anyway. On his way back from work, he is met by the girl to whom he had given his umbrella to that morning. She has been stalking him and is aware that he tried to use magic earlier, so she calls him out as the demon lord. The girl is the hero Amelia, who followed him through the portal and into the human world. However, she can't use her magic either, so she resorts to using a butter knife to attack Malo. But she is stopped by the police and taken to the police station with Malo. For some reason, despite pulling a knife on someone, she's not arrested. The police officer thinks Amelia is just the stereotypical psycho ex-girlfriend who's mad about a breakup, so he leaves them be. Amelia decides to let it go for today, but she knows where Malo lives, so he isn't going to be safe for long. In the dead of the night, she could be here watching, just like a yandere girlfriend. She leaves. In the next day, we see her in a call center as a customer service representative. Her coworker asks if she wants to hang out after work, but she has better things to do, like stalking Malo. She shows up at his door later and demands to be let in so that she can kill him. 
They do not let her in, and they have a discussion about what to do about her while she begs to be let in. They come to the conclusion that if she can't use her sacred sword, then they would probably win a fight if she tried anything, as it is two against one. So they let her in. She can't hurt them, so she tries to hurt their pride by insulting their living and food situation. But Malo already knows they are poor, so his pride can't be hurt so easily. Malo asks why she came to Earth alone, and she reveals that someone else was meant to come with her, but she was the only one who made it through the portal. Even though Malo doesn't seem to be much of a threat now, she is still intent on killing him eventually. But for now, she will leave him alone. And since she has to work tomorrow, at work, she turns down her co-worker's invitation again in order to stalk Malo some more. But she just ends up watching him go grocery shopping and go to a public bath. Now she just feels like a regular stalker as she listens to them arguing about eating cucumbers and honey. The next day, she shows up at Mala's workplace and asks to see him after work. But Chio sees this and gets jealous since Amelia is really pretty. After work, Malo meets Amelia in an alley, and she tries to convince him to give up on empty Isla as a whole. It would be better if he just lived in Japan forever. However, Malo still intends to return to empty Isla to take it over. But their conversation is cut short by a sniper shooting at them, and for a sniper, this person has pretty bad aim. Malo and Amelia dodge all the shots and run for cover. Now that they are finally safe, Malo plans to head home. But he is stopped by Amelia, who wishes to stay over at his place since she lost her wallet and can't get home. He agrees to let her spend the night and even lends her some money to take the train home in the morning. The next morning, Amelia leaves and returns to her home, where she hears the news report of the attack they encountered yesterday. The police know that there was a shooting and found Malo's bicycle, but they don't know who the shooter was. At the same time, Chio's mother sees the same report, but Chio is more interested in the date she has planned with Malo. Later, Amelia is at work when she receives a call from a suspicious man. He seems to have a lot of information on her and even knows about Anti Isla and Malo. The man tells her that Anti Isla wants the destruction of both her and Malo. But she doesn't believe it. She ends the call and explains it away to her coworker as some random weirdo calling. On her break, she wants to go get some lunch when she is called by the police to come to the police station. The police identify the bike's owner from the shooting as Malo, so they called Amelia since she was involved as well. She is angry that she got called to vouch for the demon lord, but Malo had no one else he could call. While there actually were other people he could have called, Amelia seemed the most suitable. She warns Malo about the suspicious caller from before and how he is most likely going to be targeted again. Malo is worried about it, but he has no time to do anything since he has to meet Chio. Hashia asks about the time and place and takes Malo to get some fitting clothes. Malo thinks it is just a regular meeting, so there's no point in buying new clothes for it. But Ashia explains that girls at Chio's age never ask to meet up with anyone except people they hold deeply trust. Malo meets up with Chio, and no, misses. She got a haircut, and they decide to head to a cafe for their date. She doesn't hold back and asks to hold hands with Malo, and he obliges. Ashia is following them when Amelia walks up and spots him acting all suspicious. He tries to hide it from Amelia, but she sees Malo talking to Chio, and I guess she thinks they are going to sacrifice her or something because she gets really angry and demands to know what they are planning. Ashia explains everything, and Amelia has calmed down. But she still doesn't understand what she sees in Malo, but it is clear that she's in love with him. Shigo tells Malo about the strange sound she has been hearing for a while now. While she was in her room, she heard someone's voice, and that voice was talking about a huge earthquake that was going to happen soon. To any normal person, this would sound like some teenage crazy talk, but Malo analyzes the events and realizes that the earthquakes must be coming from someone using magic to communicate across worlds. As he comes to this conclusion, he sees Amelia walking across the cafe and chokes on his coffee. He tries to play it off, and Chio tries to work up the courage to confess her feelings to him. But just as she's about to confess, Amelia stops her and tells her that Malo will only bring her misfortune. She won't stand for someone insulting her man. She thinks that Amelia must be a jealous ex and tells her to leave him alone. But then the earthquake hits, and the cafe collapses, trapping Chio and Amelia under some rubble. Chio asks Amelia once more what she thinks of Malo, but it's a really long story, and Amelia can't really explain it. So she puts her to sleep with a spell. Malo walks out from behind some rubble with his demon form somehow restored. As magic returns to him, Amelia is worried and contemplates killing Malo here and now to avoid another war. But Malo was worried about saving the people here. Thanks to him, there were no casualties in the disaster. Amelia recalls the time she spent with her father on the farm. They lived in peace and harmony, but all that changed when the demon army attacked. Due to the severity of the situation, she was taken by the Holy Church to become a hero and defend the nation. And soon after, her village was destroyed by the demon army led by Lucifer. 
From that day onward, she swore to defeat the demon lord no matter the cost. She has snapped out of her thoughts by Malo, who caught her daydreaming. With his return to his normal form and was coming to check on Amelia and Chio. But then a police officer notices them and recognizes Chio as the daughter of one of the inspectors. Malo decides to dip because while they didn't do anything wrong, Shigo doesn't want her father to know about their date. Malo and Amelia discuss what happened and come to the conclusion that this must have been an attack. They were found by them, and an attack was launched, but they retreated once they saw him. While Malo regains a bit of his power, their conversation is cut short, however, when Amelia's co-worker shows up and drags her to her apartment. While Malo and Alseal are stopped by the police and warned about a series of muggings that have been happening recently. The next day, Amelia shows up at Malo's home, and he is reasonably cautious of her sudden arrival. But when she tells him she just wants to return the 1,000 yen she borrowed, he drops his guard real fast. Now that she has done what she came for, she leaves. But as she's walking down the stairs, she falls flat on her face. Not the hero's finest moment. Malo sends Alseal to go buy some bandages to patch her up, and he tries to disinfect her wounds. But she wants to do it herself. When he expresses his worry for her, she starts yelling about how he isn't acting evil anymore. She questions where it was when he was an anti-Isla. Her father died because of his army, and everything she had was taken away from her because of him. He tries to apologize, but realistically, what is an apology gonna do? Shiro walks in on their argument and once again thinks that they're dating and runs off heartbroken. The building manager shows up after this and tells them to take care of Chio since they've gotten her mixed up in all this magic business. While two other heroes are seen traveling to Japan, Chio bumps into an emo kid, but he is acting way creepier than an emo kid usually would. It turns out that he is the one that has been targeting Malo, the demon general, Lucifer. Malo and Amelia are locked in a stare down with Lucifer while the other two heroes who are coming to help have to stop since one of them has motion sickness. Lucifer reveals that his partner in crime is Orba, the priest that was meant to accompany Amelia to Earth. Amelia is dumbfounded, how could her trusted friend betray her so easily? Orba tries to give a grambulous explanation, but plain and simple, he wants to get rid of Amelia because he was jealous of her. Orba is angry that he was cut off and has Lucifer blast Ashia through the chest with his dying breath. Ashia tells Malo to remember to use the discount code to save money at the grocery store. Following that, Lucifer rains down a barrage of blasts upon them, and they can do nothing but run away. Amelia wonders why Lucifer has so much power to begin with, and Malo explains that Lucifer feeds off negative emotions to gain his power. So all the destruction he has been causing only makes him stronger. Lucifer catches up to them and asks Malo why he didn't try to throw the world into chaos. If he knew that he would regain his power if he did so, Malo explains that he doesn't want to cause trouble in a world that has treated him so well. He quite likes Earth, and he'll do anything to protect it. But for now, all he can do is run away from him. But his escape is cut short when Orba pulls out the Glock. But Malo still has enough power to teleport out to a crowded bridge. Lucifer follows him and puts a hole in Malo's chest. And with Malo dead, he can now rain down destruction upon them and cause the bridge to fall. But Malo consumes the fear and despair of the people around him to regain his power and keep the bridge from falling on them. Amelia takes the chance to transform and go after Lucifer, engaging in a sky battle with him. She is able to handle him but gets thrown off by an exploding feather, which she has to be saved from by Alseal, who got his power back a while ago while he went home to get his outfit. While all this is happening, Malo was just standing on the ground, holding the bridge up, while Chio stares in disbelief. He has no way to explain what happened to Chio, so he doesn't bother. While Alseal and Amelia battle Orba and Lucifer, he finally puts the bridge down and can join the fight. Now, with a single stare, Orba is sent through a wall, and in the blink of an eye, he appears before Lucifer and hits him with a punch's punishment. Some may call it overkill, but I call it deserved. Those other heroes finally arrive, and they are shocked to find the demon lord behaving harmlessly, even though Malo has regained his power. He is still more interested in working than in conquering anti-Isla and rebuilds everything that was destroyed in the fight. Akira tells Amelia about the church going crazy and doing a bunch of weird stuff, so they have to go back to fight it. Everything is returned to normal for the time being. Malo and Ashia go to eat out to celebrate Malo's promotion, and it seems that they took Lucifer in. Despite all he did, he's put in charge of gathering information on magic and mastering the ways of the internet. He proves his skill by calling Amelia at her workplace, something she isn't too happy about. She goes to Malo's workplace to tell him about it, but Malo asserts that it was Lucifer who did it, not him. He had to take Lucifer, and since he can't exactly return to anti-Isla with his current magic, he gave him the name or Shihara and let him live in their room. Amelia, however, has the power to return anytime she wants, but she chooses to remain on Earth to watch Malo. 
Maya returns home and sees Oshihara passed out on the floor and Ashia throwing up in the bathroom. They shot a bikini picture of the landlady and ended up like this, the same way I do when I look at the gas prices. So Malo does the smart thing and ignores the picture. Instead, he changes the subject to the identification of magic areas, and Oshihara has something that might be related, the forbidden classroom. They head to the school to investigate, but as two bro men, they can't exactly just stroll in and start searching classrooms. But then, they notice Chio waving at them and realize that this is her school. Later, at work, Malo asks Chio about the mystery, and it seems that something strange is indeed happening there. So later that night, they sneak into the school to find out more. The rumors say that a student went missing in that classroom, and sometimes a demonic silhouette can be seen in the window. She always seems to be enjoying this a bit too much, but she is just happy to spend time with Malo. They hear footsteps across the hall, and it turns out that Amelia followed them into the school and chases them around to stop them. But she ends up destroying an anatomical model with her sword. All this is seen by a mysterious woman in the building across from them. They enter the forbidden classroom, and it turns out they've been played. This is where Oshihara entered Japan. That is the only reason there is anything magical about that place, and Oshihara only sent them there to pick up his game. Well, that was a huge waste of time, next to Miles, but she trips on the stairs and falls down. The new neighbor offers them a box of noodles as a gift. As she is quite the traditional type, she hopes to have a good relationship with her neighbors. Meanwhile, Amelia also receives a package from her hero friend, a box of special drinks that will help restore her holy power if she drinks it. But she has to be careful not to overdose lest she end up dead. Amelia still continues her stalking even in the hot summer sun, and she finally realizes Ma wasn't doing anything worth watching, he is just living a normal life. So she's just acting like a regular old stalker. But then she notices the new neighbor giving Arishihara housework lessons and gets curious, so she listens in on the conversation. But when Suzuna opens the door, she has to run away, and then those stairs strike again. Amelia falls down the stairs but luckily is caught by Mile. She knocks Marlo down and gets dropped in the process. They go in to discuss what has happened and they clear up the misunderstandings. But Amelia seems to think that Suzuno is in love with Malahu as well, so she tries to warn her but doesn't seem like the message is getting through. She offers her assistance if anything were to happen and bids her farewell, but not before falling down the stairs again. The next day, Omaha was given a lunchbox by Suzuno and is about to eat on his break when Chio asks him where he got it. As soon as he mentions that there is another girl living near him, she becomes hysterical and demands to see its contents. That same night, Amelia is returning from a grocery store when a man in his ski mask runs up to her and attacks her out of nowhere. She pulls off her sword and retaliates, but this guy has some kind of magic eye that prevents her from using her magic properly. She is defeated, but the grocery store clerk comes and clutch and saves her with some oranges. After all that has happened, Chio calls Amelia with more pressing news. Maya received a lunchbox with a heart. Shiga will not stand for such encroachment upon her man. She is prepared for a war of food. She has made her own lunchbox for Mile and has Amelia there for moral support. But all the support in the world couldn't prepare Chio for what she saw when she answered the door. Suzuno is on a first name basis with Mao. Shigo is obviously jealous that Suzuno was cooking for Mao, but she can't deny that Suzuno is great at it. They all sit down to eat and chill. Praises Suzuno for cooking all this food. But in truth, while shopping, Suzuno bought a warehouse load of food and she can't eat it all. The food would go bad, so she is sharing it. She would like to get a job to cover her other expenses, so Mao offers her a job at McDonald's, and Suzuno says she will consider it. But before any of that, they have to sort out Suzuno's wardrobe situation. So Amelia takes her shopping home, and asks if she was bothered about him being a demon, and while she does care a little, she was already in love with him before she found out. And as we all know, love makes one do weird things like ignoring mass murder and attempted genocide. But little did they know, Suzuna was right around the corner and heard Chio's confession of love, causing Chio to run off in an embarrassed frenzy. Suzuna is just surprised that Mao was loved so much. Suzuna meets up with Amelia at the train station, but she has never used a train before. She just opened a portal straight into the city. Hold up, let's rewind a bit. So Suzuno is actually an investigator from NT Isla and was sent to watch Mile, but they didn't have time to talk about it since they need to catch their train. Suzuna only learned about the historical aspect of Japan, so she has no idea about modern culture. She was meant to come and kill Mav as well as return Amelia to Anti Isla, but Amelia doesn't want to go. She can't trust the church anymore after all that has happened. Meanwhile, Mile is faced with the toughest opponent he has ever met, Santucky Fried Chicken, no relation, of course. They've taken almost all of Mag Ronald's customers and don't seem to be letting up in the slightest. Amelia is met outside her workplace by Suzuno, 
who wants her to go to Mao's workplace with her, and Amelia refuses. But her coworker, thinking this is some sort of love triangle, demands to follow along for the drama. They get to Mag Reynolds and notice it is lacking in terms of customers. And who wants to see a fight without a crowd? They decide to go to Santaki. In the meantime, they order and sit down to eat, and the coworker asks for the details on their relationship with Mao. And when Amelia starts badmouthing him, Ashia, who was sent to investigate Santaki, cannot stand it anymore. But he's easily bought off with the promise of ordering some extra food. The coworker, Rika, asks Ashia about Mao's relationship with Amelia. So Ashia creates a dramatic story about them running a company that was bankrupt by Amelia's rival company. A story that could easily be proven to be a lie by one Google search, but she just believes it. But the story seemed to work a little too well as she has started falling for Ashia. They all move over to Mag Reynolds, and Ashia gives his report. Now is the time to strike. Mile has a tree delivered to participate in the ongoing festival and attract customers, and it seems to work really well, even though he might be using magic to make it happen. The next day, the manager was so impressed by his work that she sends him to help another store over at Fushima Park. Shigo wants to accompany him, but she isn't allowed to. At home, they discuss Mao's transfer over a huge bowl of noodles that may or may not be expired. And Orshara finds out about the haunted house that is going to open there. If there is a haunted house, then there will be plenty of fear to absorb and gain magic from. Meanwhile, Chio plans to go to the park anyway, so she invites Amelia to go with her, and Amelia invites Suzunu in order to keep an eye on Mile. The next day, Chio and the others meet up at the park, and Amelia is stunned by Chio's huge personality. Mao is so busy at work, so they plan to go to the haunted house. But even though two of them are trained warriors, there was no way they could prepare for such horrors. Next, they head to the lizard exhibit, but Chio and Amelia are both apprehensive, but for slightly different reasons. But they go in anyway. Then some final destination happens. Amelia bumps into a worker, causing him to drop his keys. A monkey gets loose and finds the keys, and then said monkey ends up unlocking the crocodile exhibit. Panic ensues as people run for their lives, but this messes up Mao's work. So he calmly walks straight towards the crocodiles and uses the fear from the people around him to gain some magic and restrain the crocodiles. But no one else sees this, but he used all the magic that he gains. He is back to being basically powerless when he returns home. Ashia is still down and out with a bad case of diarrhea thanks to the noodles. Mao and the others later receive a package from the landlady, or rather a truckload of packages. She asked them to sell the things she bought on her trip at the neighborhood bazaar. Survey and Lise helped to do so. Suzuno has a moral dilemma where she was an assassin for the church, and the church isn't exactly the most morally upstanding group. She killed, worrying about who was right and who was wrong, and now she wonders if what she did was actually worth it. Enrique is still hung up on the Amelia telenovela love triangle and asks Amelia about all the details of the park trip. The next day, Chio goes over to Maya's place to help with the boxes because Ashia is still blowing up the toilet with his diarrhea. They also know that Amelia is also there because Arishihara pulled a Batman and planted a tracking device on her. They all sort through the piles of items and get them sorted for the bazaar. Suzuno is having fun, but her mission is to kill Mile, so she has to do it. She tells Chio and Amelia that she's going to kill Mao, and Chio is still in war crime ignoring love with him, so she's obviously against it. However, Suzuno has a point. Demons live for a long time, and one day he might get bored and blow up Greenland for fun. But still, he hasn't done anything yet, so there's no reason to kill him now. Suzuno was still hung up on her mission to kill Mile and storms off, allowing that mysterious guy to attack again. It turns out that he's the manager of Kentucky Fried Chicken, still no relation, of course, and he is also an angel. So Amelia doesn't stand much of a chance against his power and is knocked around while Suzuno knocks Chio out. Mao gets a call from Chio's mother asking where her daughter is, and he has no idea. She isn't in his place. Orishihara is finally pulling his weight as the computer guy and gives Mile intel about the Kentucky guy and Amelia's location. Now that Mao knows where to go, he grabs the most powerful weapon known to all Asian parents, the broomstick, and rides off to save Chio and maybe Amelia if he has the time. Ashia has finally been sent to the hospital, but all he can think of is how much the hospital bill is going to cost him. He should be glad he doesn't live in America. In the hallway, he notices a man lying unconscious on the floor, and upon further inspection, the man is found to be a police officer. While he is distracted, he gets clocked in the gut by Orba, who then disappears back to Amelia. She is currently being tortured by the angel to get her to relinquish her sacred power. Mao always arrives, but he can't get in thanks to a barrier set up. So Juno jumps down to kill him, but Mao still has some moves and is able to dodge her attacks. He tells her to wait a moment so that he can take off his uniform because he can't afford to have it replaced. 
He already knew she was from anti Isla and chose to ignore it, but now she's gotten other people mixed up in this for no reason. You know you've messed up when a demon has the moral high ground on you. She gives up but tells Mao that there is no way he will be able to defeat Serial like this. But Mao has to try anyway. Serial is still trying to extract the sacred power from Amelia, but Mao shows up on the roof. He still doesn't care what happens to Amelia, but he does care about Chio. So they've got a problem. Mao, however, still lacks magic compared to an angel, so he's incredibly weak. But luckily, Orba casts a spell that causes a huge unnatural phenomenon to occur in the sky. This causes unrest and anxiety in the people of Japan, and demons love that stuff. Mao is now able to recover his magic power after consuming the anxiety of all the city. And don't worry, his boxers are made of the same stuff that the Hulk's pants are made out of, so they won't be ripping during the fight. They start to fight, and the collateral damage is large scale as Serial blows up a building with his first attack. There were definitely people in there, so this angel just killed them. If an angel is doing this, then maybe Mao's war crimes aren't so bad. Mao turns Serial into a 2D figure and tries to smash him, but he manages to escape. He realizes he was outmatched when Mao started altering dimensions, so he tries to take Chio hostage. But that turns out to be an illusion of Mao, who then kicks Serial across the building. Mao finishes him off with a demonic blade slash but accidentally nukes the city in the process. That's another one for the war crime counter. Mao ends up restoring the city to its former state, but that drains all his magic again. He is back to being powerless. Everything is normal again, with the exception of Serial, but he's just a harmless freak now. Ashia asks Mao for some time off, which seems suspicious, and a bunch of other suspicious things happen, prompting Amelia to go back into stalker mode but with Chio this time. It may look suspicious, but he is just working an extra job to pay for the tracking devices that Arishihara bought. Amelia smashes the tracking device once she figures out it is on her, but Miles' money troubles are only beginning. He arrives home to find that Arishihara has been scammed into buying a bunch of random stuff and can't return it. They try calling the customer service representative, but he isn't much help, so they go there in person. The representative turns out to be Ashia. He took on the job and didn't know he was working for a scam. You may be a demon, but he isn't that evil. But there still isn't anything they can do about the scam since a contract was signed. They seem defeated, but Amelia knows of one loophole they can exploit. Since Arishihara is registered as a minor, he can't legally make purchases of that scale, so the contract is voided. He has the grin of the devil on his face as the scammer is forced to take back all the merchandise. And that's about